Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, to my lecture uh, to the course on aspects of biochemical engineering. Till now, I, I was discussing uh, that uh, uh, chemical reaction kinetics, then chemical reactor analysis, the enzymatic reaction kinetics both by using free enzyme and the immobilized enzyme system. Now, today I am, uh, I am going to discuss a new topic that is uh, kinetics of substrate utilization, product formation and biomass production of microbial cells. So, so what, uh, what I told you, you can remember that you know in which way this uh, uh, biochemical system is differ from chemical system. I told you the beauty of the biochemical system is that from, from a particular raw materials, we can produce n number of products. As for example, if you look at glucose, we can convert it to ethanol, we can convert it to citric acid, we can convert to lactic acid, we can convert to acetic acid. So, different type of products we can form from, from one compound. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but in, if you look at the chemical process, that uh, as your product changes, your raw material changes. But here, in the how, uh, question come how it is possible in the biochemical system how it is possible this is possible i mean due to the fact that uh, that you know that microorganism that plays very important role the different microorganism has the different capability because one that's why i can give the example that yeast as for example saccharomyces cerevisiae they can convert uh, glucose to ethanol am i right now, if you if you look at um, uh, that uh, uh, by this uh, uh, aspergillus niger, it can convert glucose to uh, to uh, glucose to uh, citri the citric acid. Now, lactobacillus kg or lactobacillus delbrueckii, it can convert this uh, uh, glucose to this uh, lactic acid. So you know that indicates that you know that your raw material is the same, but you are getting the different type of products. So, this is very interesting. I hope uh, uh, you, uh, I, uh, that you will understand uh, this, uh, this thing. Uh, if you understand, then you can have better idea on the bio biochemical reaction kinetics. So, uh, first thing that I want to tell here that is uh, that uh, how the enzymatic system differ from the microbial system. Now, what is what we have in the enzymatic system? Enzymatic system Suppose, um, I just now I explained that uh, glucose is converted to fructose with the help of glucose isomerase enzyme, am I right? Now, so uh, glucose, but if you use other than glucose, your glucose isomerase enzyme will not act. So, you require a specific substrate, but the enzymes are very specific with respect to substrate. You cannot, it can, it very one particular specific substrate only it will attack and give the product. But in case of microbial system is totally different. Micro, when microbes they grow, they grow in a media, and in the media, like we are all human beings, for our survival, we what we required, we required carbon source, we required nitrogen source, we require minerals, we require vitamins. But similarly, microbes also they required all this. They required carbon source, they required nitrogen source, they require minerals, they require the vitamin. So, totally that you know, so what is the reaction mixture for the enzymatic system and reaction mixture for the um, uh, microbial cell growth uh, that is totally different. So, here I want to emphasize that if you look at the difference, the I told you the enzymes, the basically they are globular protein, they are randomly folded and in process they develop some kind of active site and this active site is responsible for the enzymatic reaction. And uh, they are specific, they are very specific with respect to substrate. They only at a particular temperature and pH, no ability to adapt to the changes condition or substrate sources, it does not have the ability. Only substrate is required to carry out, the, it does not require anything else, 
you require the only the substrate and proper pH and temperature and cannot repair themselves or reproduce. So, this is the uh, enzyme that is the ca uh, ca characteristics of the enzyme that we have. Now, if you look at the microbial system, the living organism that carry out broad spectrum of biochemical reaction. I already mentioned that you know that different type of uh, the same substrate can produce different type of products and then acts on a variety of substrate. They can act on not only glucose, they can act different substrate they can use as a, as a raw materials and function optimum range of pH and temperature can adapt to change the environmental condition and substrate. Let me tell you that, uh, that this is the typical characteristics of the living system. One, what is the typical characteristics of the living system? The typical characteristics of living system is the acclimatization property. What is the acclimatization property? That means that, uh, that uh, suppose uh, uh, b b I can I can give the example that we are we are living in the tropical country. Now when you go to the western country, they they are very cold. So immediately after going there, b b the, we will be having kind of setback because we require some time to acclimatize with the environment. Then we can walk properly. Organism also like this. Organism when you inoculate, it has a new environment for the organism. So, they required some time for this acclimatize, the, but you know slowly slowly they will acclimatize. I can give a typical example. Now, astronaut when they go to the to the planet that uh, that moon and other places then they the in between the temperature shooted very high maybe 50 60 degree centigrade now if if we increase the temperature of the room this suppose uh, 45 50 degree centigrade we will run away because we cannot our body cannot tolerate it but our body can tolerate it when we increase the temperature slowly and slowly and our, so our body will be adjusted at one time when we can we can adjust with. So, in you know, acclimatization property is a, is a typical property of the living system and, and another is the they are very sensitive to the environment. The growth media is required comprising of carbon source, nitrogen source, vitamin and mineral this I already mentioned can produce the and bounce back if it damages. So, uh, that you know the reproduction that is a typical characteristics. Now, here in the growth media the here I want to emphasize that this carbon source has three different purpose. What is that three different purpose? It is used as a as bodybuilding material, it is used as an energy source, it is used for the production of typical product. Now, nitrogen source mostly contribute for the cell mass formation. Now, vitamin and minerals they mostly have uh, mostly take part in the in the metabolic reaction because uh, if you look at our metabolic pathways, we uh, we require different enzymes and all enzymes they require cofactor and these cofactors mostly they are minerals or the vitamins. So this is uh, how they take part in this reaction. <coughs> Now, uh, let us uh, discuss about the kinetics of the, uh, because when we, when, we, when we talk about the kinetics of the uh, microbial cell growth, now the uh, question comes uh, that how we shall have to monitor the, we monitor the concentration of the cells, am I right? Now, when we have the microbial cell, the microbial cells might be of two types. One is uh, your unicellular cell, another is the multicellular cell, the ordinal filamentous type of cell. Now, in case of unicellular cell, the numbers you know, is proportional to the mass. So, as for example, if we talk about the bacteria, suppose the bacteria they are mostly they are, uh, they are unicellular cells. So, you know, we know that what is the mass of one particular cell. So, if you, so if you, even you know that concentration of the cell may be grams per liter or milligram per liter and if you know the mass of individual cells, if you divide by mass of individual cells, we will get the number of the cells. So, you know number and mass, they will be interconvertible in case of unicellular cells, unicellular cells, am I right? But in case of multicellular cell, it is not possible. You, know, you have to consider only the mass of the mass of the that uh, cells. 
Now, uh, the substrate plus cells, how the reaction take place? Substrate plus cells, the extracellular product and, and cells. The cells, the, the reproduction is the cell is a factor. So, how you can write? This is substrate is consumed with the cell mass with this area added and this gives the product and this is more cell mass is produced. Now, net specific growth rate of the cell, how you can write? This is 1 by x dx by dt. So, this is x, x is when we express this mass per unit volume, am I right? So, but I told you in case of unicellular cell, mass and number they are in interconvertible. So, if, if it is in case of unicellular cell, we can express this 1 by n dn by dt. So, this uh, with respect to number, we can do that. Now, now as you know that any kind of microbial uh, population uh, or any kind of living population, always there will be growth and there will be death. The actually, the net specific growth rate of the cells should be equal to the growth rate of the cells and death rate of the cells. That is the, uh, the that is the, the specific growth rate minus specific death rate that as should be equal to actual growth because the because one thing we should remember that when we carry out any kind of microbial reaction only living cell they participate in the reaction then the dead cell will not participate in the reaction so then <clears throat> so that we shall have to take into consideration what topic I have given here this is the this is the This is the kinetics of modeling uh, for the microbial growth system. So, we have four different type of models. One is structured model, unstructured model, unsegregated model and segregated model. So, the mathematical model the when you use any kind of cell growth that you know we can have four different type of structure. Now, for different type of models. Now, let us try to understand the what do you mean by segregated model or the unsegregated model, structured model and unstructured model. Now, what is segregated model? Suppose, uh, segregated model means that the, in, a, uh, in our society, we are so many peoples are here. Now, we, we find that some way that you know under no circumstances that the one, one person is totally same as the other person, it is not possible. Even twin that we have, then uh, twin uh, children also there will be some kind of difference you will find. So, what is the, what, uh, what is the, what is the, uh, what is the actual case as the, that all the, all the human beings, all the uh, human population, their growth characteristics, they differ from each other. Am I right? Now, if it is so, it is same is applicable to the microbial system. If the microbes when grow, they are also different, uh, n number of cells are there. So, growth characteristics of the individual cells will be different, different. Now, if your mathematical model deals with the growth characteristics of the each cell individually, suppose we, uh, in our society, we, uh, how we, uh, we, uh, we identify the different people with respect to their name. Now, in, in a microbial population, if you put a marker 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then we determine the growth characteristics of the individual. What is the growth characteristics of number 1 cell? What is the growth characteristics of number 2 cell? What is the growth characteristics of number 3 cell? And if the, pro, the if mathematical model deals with that, we call it segregated model. And what do you call unsegregated model? When we assume the growth characteristics of the all the cells 1, 2, 3, 4, they are same. Because you know this is the kind of idealist situation because ideal situation means it is non-existence. The real situation is that that is really that present. So, uh, ideally when you when you make kind of ideal situation then we assume the growth characteristics of the all the cells will be same. So, and then it will be unsegregated model. Now, what do you mean by structured model? Structured model means cell comprises of n number of biomolecules. They have RNA, DNA, protein and all these molecules they have. Now, when cell grow, this uh, concentration of this RNA, DNA, protein and this uh, may vary with respect to and with respect to time. And if it, if you, 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 your model deals with rate of, um, rate of formation, the rate of formation rate of formation of 
of RNA. Am I right? RNA. Then another model deals with the rate of formation of DNA. Another model may be with respect to some kind of protein, different type of protein. So, you know, then we call it structured model. But unstructured model is what when we assume the rate of formation of RNA, rate of formation of DNA, rate of formation of different protein, they are not differ from each other. They are producing at the same rate. So, that we call it unstructured model. So, what, if, what I want to tell that unstructured and un, unsegregated and unstructured model is the when we, we consider the one component solute and this is called ideal model ideal situation and this is structured model is considered as the real, real situation that we have. Now, mono, mono equation that is, uh, uh, that is uh, some kind of disbalance with the Michaelis Menten equation for enzymatic reaction and this is actually on the basis of unstructured and unsegregated model. That is the ideal model, ideal condition that mu equal to mu max S k s plus s. And what is the s? S is called limiting substrate concentration, limiting, limiting substrate concentration. Am I right? Limiting substrate concentration. Now, what do you mean by limiting substrate concentration? It is very interesting. Suppose we talk about media, am I right? Because a microorganism growth in a media and media comprises of n number of components. It may contain nitrogen source, it can contain uh, carbon source, it can contain minerals, it can contain vitamin. Now, suppose if you if you increase one particular component from 0 to infinity, keeping other component excess then if you find that specific rate of growth is increases like this and with respect to change of that particular component, then we call it growth limiting substrate. Now, it may be carbon source, it may be nitrogen source, it may be minerals, it may be vitamin, anything. But in case of enzymatic reaction, I told you substrate is very specific with respect to the enzyme. That cannot be changed. When you use glucose isomerase enzyme, then your substrate is only glucose. You get cannot be fructose, this can be only glucose. This is similar like this. So, mu is the specific growth rate of the cell, and, and uh, mu max is the this is the maximum that you can see this is the maximum growth rate of the cell when it attains the plateau. And uh, when mu by mu is there, then k s will be equal to s. k s is the saturation constant. Now, here I want to emphasize one thing that what is the significance of the value of k s? Now, if k s value is low, that means you require low amount of substrate for getting a more amount of cell mass. If k s is more, you require more amount of substrate for getting the same amount of cell mass. So, that is the uh, significance of the k s value. Now, this is the, now this equation that uh, if you look at that when this what is that equation that we have? We have mu equal to mu max s k s plus s. Am I right? Now, when s tends to infinity, if you this is the first situation, if it is very high, then we can neglect it. I mean, if we neglect it, then this s s will cancel each other and then mu will be tends to mu max. Am I right? This is, the, this is exactly what we have written here. Now, now, but now another when you write this equation mu max s k s plus s. Now, s will be finite when s is finite because if s is finite, then I can say mu should be finite. Am I right? So, this you can add here and another is that um, it does not explain when s is tends to 0. It does not explain what will happen when s tends to 0 and it does not take care the death of the cells because the when we the mu that only that growth of the cell they have but in the actual practice when cell grow there is some death of the cells and it does not take care the inhibition effect there will be some substrate inhibition and product inhibition that is not considering in the monod equation now 
if you look at the different processes that we have, more how you do the cultivation of the mode of cultivation of the microbial cells, we have three different type of processes. We have batch process, we have feed batch process, we have continuous process. Now, let me explain the fed batch I have already explained you take the material at a time, let it react after the reaction is over you take it out. Okay. In between you are not take, adding anything to the reactor and taking out anything from the reactor. But what is fed batch reactor? Fed batch reactor means you, you add the substrate in different uh, slowly and slowly. So, initially let the you take small volume of substrate, let the reaction take place and then when substrate concentration decreases again you add some substrate. So, that you maintain the concentration below the inhibitor area slowly slowly. So, there is the input of substrate and there is no output of substrate. So, that is the that is what the exactly we have shown here there is the input of substrate, but there is no output of substrate. Now, when it comes at the total volume then we stop the operation we take it out and continuous system is something different. We I told you whenever we operate any kind of continuous system we first operate in a batch mode let the reaction take place when the re react rate of reaction is maximum then we feed the substrate like this and continuously and take the product from this. So, here substrate is coming and product is coming out like this and uh, this is a continuous process. Now, whenever we handle any kind of uh, microbial system, we should have a very uh, good idea about the life cycle of the cells. Because when, when suppose I want to handle a new microorganism and try to find out its capability for producing certain product, the first uh, you know that uh, the when when you take a microorganism it is totally black box for me because black box means we don't know how this organism is growing. When, when it will be going maximum, when it will go to the stationary phase that we do not know. So, it is the whenever we handle any kind of new microorganism first our duty is to develop the life cycle and during the life cycle what are the things you, you have? You have you, you, you can have the lag phase, you can have the log phase, you can find out the stationary phase and you can have the death phase. Now, every phase has its significance. What is lag phase? Lag phase is considered as the acclimatization phase. Acclimatization phase. So, so, organism requires some time to acclimatize with new environment. And what is the log phase? Log phase the all, or we call it exponential growth phase. This is means here the organisms are very active. This is very active. Am I right? And this is the stationary phase. What is stationary phase? this is called starvation phase. What is starvation? Because you, 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 you are not giving the sufficient amount of substrate to the organism. So, they starve for the survival. The here rate of death is equal to rate of growth of the cell and death phase is the dying phase is the most of the organism they are dying at this phase. So, this is the, the because why, what is the significance? Significance is that that whenever we we do any kind of inoculation because uh, when you work with any kind of microorganism that we have to inoculate and when you inoculate you should be ensured your organism is very active and when when you should inoculate you should this is this is considered mid log phase this is considered mid log phase am i right and this is the late log phase late log phase so your your inoculation should be during these phases. That means during this time, this inoculation just to ensure that uh, your organisms are very active at that time. Because if you if you inoculate the cell here, then every possibility that your population has lot of dead cell. So your the your rate of reaction is a is a problem. So this is the, this one has to keep it in mind. Now now here what we have written the lag phase the cell adapt to the new environment and no or very little cell growth take place. So, mu net equal to approximately equal to 0. Log phase the growth achieves its maximum this we consider as the active phase where mu net equal to mu max. And stationary phase is the growth is this is the stationary phase what we call starvation phase uh, due to starvation where mu net equal to 0. Rate of growth is equal to rate of death of the cell 
and in the death phase this loses the viability and lies take place mean rate is less than 0. Now, uh, if you if you do the uh, cell mass balance across this reactor particularly in the batch process then how we can do that the rate of input of the cell because rate of input and output of the cell is uh, equal to 0 in a batch process because you are not putting anything in the reactor continuously taking out the, this is not you are doing anything. So, this will be equal to 0. The rate of uh, that uh, the growth of the cell that a rate of input uh, uh, that a rate of generation of the cell cells are generated. So, that, that will be mu mu g into x into v. So, so, we know that what is mu? Mu k equal to 1 by x dx by dt. Am I right? So, what is the dx by dt is the rate of growth of the cell that is equal to mu into mu into x. So, uh, that that what is dx by dt? x is mass per unit volume. So, this is the volume of the liquid, volume of the liquid. So, growth takes place along the whole volume. So, this is to be multiplied by v the d, dx by dt into v, this we can write mu into x into v. Am I right? Similarly, that you know that uh, here that uh, that uh, that uh, accumulation in the batch system, the, the cell mass that accumulation take place of what we can write dx v into dt and cell mass death we can write k d into k d is the specific death rate of the cell into x into v. So, uh, this uh, this rate of growth actually rate of growth ultimately we can write mu max minus k d into x this is this is the net growth rate we can write like this now how you can find out that uh, that you know that uh, uh, that time required for the uh, for changing the cell mass from x to x 0 to x so, this is the very simple way we can do that that, that, that uh, mu, we know mu equal to 1 by x, we know mu equal to 1 by x equal to uh, um, uh, dx by dt. So, this we can write in this form, this we can write in this form, then we can this we can write dx by this is the integrate x by x 0, x by x 0 the mu value and uh, t value you can easily find out that ln we can write ln x by x 0 divided by mu. This will be the time that required for a batch process. You know, this is the batch process we can easily calculate. Now, uh, in, in case of microbial population, two uh, things we come across. One is called doubling time, another is generation time. Doubling time means the time required to double the cell population and what is the generation time? Generation time means the time required for the cell division. Now, during the cell division the one cell may one cell may divide into two, two cell, it may divide into three cell also, it may divide into four cell also. So, so since uh, in the in case of generation time the uh, the birds in during the cell division the where the that whether one cell divided into two three four is there so it is different the naturally not necessarily the doubling time is equal to generation time now if you are so one cell divided into two cell in that case generation time is equal to doubling time so here how we can calculate now what what equation we have written in the previously t batch equal to what we can written ln x by x zero no, but that you know that uh, x zero by uh, your mu. Am I right? So this is uh, the the two two is uh, dou doubling time means double the cell population. So this x zero x zero will cancel. Then this will be ln two by mu. This is exactly this we had reason the doubling time. The double the cell population. That what is the minimum doubling time? This is ln two by mu max. Mu max is the maximum specific uh, growth rate of the cell. So, this is the minimum. And so, in a, suppose in a problem, if I give you that minimum doubling time of the cell is this, from that you can easily find out the mu max value. Now, if you want to find out that what is the generation time, then 
x x 0 will be converted to x n. Let us assume the x n is the uh, we do not know that uh, for part cell division how much cell is producing. The, let us assume for each cell division x n cell is produced. Then if you then your uh, generation time will be l n x n by x 0 by mu. Then we can calculate the generation time of the cells. Now, uh, now in this uh, there, there are different terminology we use. One is called specific growth rate of the cell, specific substrate consumption rate, specific product formation rate. I want to emphasize here that when we use the term specific that is with respect to per unit cell mass concentration. But as for example, specific product formation rate, rate of product formation per unit cell mass per, per, uh, per, per cell mass. Uh, per unit cell mass concentration, rate of substrate degradation and the specific rate of substrate degradation, rate of substrate degradation per unit cell mass concentration. Now, another term we come across that is the yield coefficient, this is the growth yield that is the this is the d x by d s, the gram of cell produce gram of cell produce per gram of substrate consumed not added consumed. So, that we should we should remember. Here also when y p by s, this will be gram of product form per gram of substrate consumed. So, this we shall have to remember. And, uh, and uh, this equation that we, we, we can write uh, d x by d t is this that we can write it and the, from this we can uh, d s by d t if we want to calculate this we can write d s by d x d x by d t and d x by d t we can put the value mu into x we can put and this is equal to 1 by this we can write <coughs> this what we can write this is equal to we will do 1 by y x by s d x by d t d x by d t is the mu into x and what is mu mu equal to mu max s uh, into x. So, you can write it like this. Now, how you can find out the kinetic constant we have shown in the enzymatic reaction three different plots we have. One is called uh, liner of a plot, another is the eddy Hofstra plot and Hensley plot. The similar way we can do that, that uh, if we plot line 1 by mu versus 1 by s, we can find out from the intercepts 1 by mu max value slope. From this slope, we can find out the value of k s by mu max. If you put the value of mu max here, you will get the k s. Similarly, AD Hofstra plot we can find out the case and mu max value and hence and Wolf plot we can find out the case and mu max value. Now, what is the advantages and disadvantages of the batch process? Now, batch process that is easy to set up and maintain very because if you look at our, uh, our fermentation industry mostly they are batch mode. As soon as the voltage organization we have joint treaty, then then all the we have free trade in the different countries, then all the foreign company they enter into India, then our, our Indian company they immediately they change over their technology to the uh, advanced technology. Then batch process they are compared to the continuous process, because continuous process the productivity is much more as compared to the batch process. So, only the only the, the the beauty of this process that is easy to set up and maintain can use to study the life cycle of the cell that is very important to handle the cells lower capital investment reduce the risk of contamination or cell mutation of the uh, as the growth period is short and useful for the production of secondary metabolites but the disadvantages is the cannot hold the uh, lock phase for a longer period of time because uh, we, we have seen the life cycle. What is the life cycle? As the time passes on, one phase switches over to other phase because lock phase switches over to the stationary phase. Uh, that is the major drawback with the batch system. So, if you want to suppose you want to have uh, uh, more cell productivity in the system, so you should operate the system in a uh, uh, lock phase for longer period of time. Uh, that is not possible in case of batch process. Lower productivity that is one, one of the problem. Then required high downtime for cleaning and sterilization and safety problem uh, when filling and emptying the 
cleaning the react head and batch to batch variability the batch to batch productivity may vary so these are the several problem that we have with the batch process so in this lecture i try to uh, tell the cell growth kinetics cell growth kinetics is very important the reason is that lot of biochemical industries are operated by using the different type of microorganism the beauty of this system is that one particular substrate can produce n number of different type of products the first question is that how you monitor the cell mass concentration the cell mass can be monitored uh, if it is the unicellular cell you can have either number of cells or the mass of the cells per unit volume but in case of multicellular cell or the filamentous cells we still have to consider mass of the cell per unit volume now when you talk about the growth model it may have maybe of four different types one is segregated model unsegregated model structured model and unstructured model and then monod equation is the similar to the michaelis menten equation can be used for the, um, for explaining the growth kinetics now in the monod uh, monod model has the different drawbacks because it doesn't include the death of the cell it doesn't include the inhibition of the cells and uh, here they have uh, they have assumed that when substrate is tends to infinity the mu tends to mu max when s is finite mu is finite but it doesn't explain what will happen when s tends to zero then uh, I, i try to find out that what is the application of life cycle on the cell growth because when you handle any kind of organism life cycle plays very important role because when you do the inoculation inoculation should be done in the lock phase mid lock phase to late lock phase and um, and then uh, i i try to find out the how you can determine how determine the the growth kinetics is constant as for example mu max and ks by using lino per bark plot ad hops plot hence and plot and also finally i discuss the advantage and disadvantages of the batch process thank you very much